We drank a beer at the airport. I watched a televised debate a year on from the 9th of March protests. At half past two, I went to the Belgrad department store to the sports section. I had a look at the hunting rifles, pistols and pistol holders. At the train station, I saw paramilitaries from Kraina. In Knez Mikhailova, 
posters announcing the day of the wounded. And posters calling on young men to volunteer and join the militia of Vuk Drashkovic's Serbian renewal movement. Pitbulls. I saw a petition asking to reinstate the civil rights of the Karadjordjevic royal dynasty. I had a coffee at Hotel Moskva. At six, I saw a truck with a band playing at the back, a student protest. I followed the rally up to the horse. McDonald's, two gypsy kids begging. There was a huge opposition meeting in front of the St. Sava Cathedral. A service for the dead, for those who died on the 9th of March, those who died during the first year of this war, and for the father of the bridegroom who had been killed in Sarajevo. Pavle spoke about being the patriarch of all Serbs. Let's hope no Serbian blood will be spilled by Serbian hands as Serbian blood has already been spilt by the enemy. A choir sang. God, our hope, protect and cherish Serbian lands and the Serbian race. I drank a coffee in Knez Mikhailova. In Sarajevo, in ironic response to the real barricades, counter barricades have been erected, serving meatballs. I went to the police station to register. We waited for half an hour. In that time, 15 people came to register a gun. The policeman behind, behind the counter was going crazy. At half past three at Terrazia, a student demonstration with the slogan, Resignation. The coffee boiled over. Terazia, the students are still protesting. I called Vilma. I'm still 50 guilders overdrawn. In Ljubljana, Mabel has received a new passport, a Yugoslav one. I added new items to my bibliography and made a selection for the library. I read Batakovic and a book about the Catholic Diocese of Skopje. Mabel is now planning to come to visit her father in Kosovo and to arrange her affairs in Vojvodina. At five, I added to my bibliography what I got from V and I studied Albanian. B was angry that I wanted to cut out V. His secretary had in intercepted a letter from V in which he allegedly supported B's role as a supervisor, but it could be also be read as a complaint against B. He was willing to help, but only informally. I explained I was interested in narratives about Letnica, both from pilgrims and priests. I put the emphasis on ritual. I tried to present my research as harmless as possible. I read a newspaper in the park. I saw a woman in military gear. She was holding up a book by Bulatovic. The war was better. In the evening, the leader of the Serbian radical party, Sheshel, and the leader of the liberal party were on television. Sheshel was by far the more imposing one. I started writing a letter to the parish priest in Letnica. I finally finished the bibliography and printed it. I continued writing the letter to Dutschkic. In the afternoon, I went for a walk along the Sava River. I tried to call Mabel just before midnight and managed to get through at once. She told me she had all sorts of problems but didn't want to talk about them. I did the dishes, I ate and worked, I practiced some Albanian. 
At 9.30 I got up, bought borba and had breakfast. I spent the whole day reading the book about the Skopje diocese. At 8 I watched a football match between the Netherlands and Yugoslavia. Holland won 2-0. I got her on the phone after midnight and advised her to come via Hungary. In the morning all sorts of reports of soaring prices, in the evening images of the fighting in Bosnia. Even so, Mabel is coming over Bosnia. Mabel called from Sarajevo. Everything is fine. 7 p.m. I waited at the bus station. Soldiers and Muslims from Bosnia. We went home. Rada was not there. We went to bed and made love. It's a cold day. We walked to Kalemegdan. We ate some sweet pastry in Knez Mikhailova and Mabel browsed perfumes in shop windows. Mabel made pita, we did the dishes. At 10 in the evening we went to bed and had a serious conversation about us. She was intending to leave to Pristina. We went to the optician to buy a pair of glasses for Mabel. For three months they had been filming the war in Slavonia and then from one day to the next they were refused entry into the offices of TV Belgrad. Since then, Velko has been hiding to avoid being drafted. We watched football at Olga's place. She complained that inflation was high. There was no money in the banks. She talked about shortages of oil and sugar. She talked about the Second World War, about Russians who raped women and stole watches, about Vojvodina, the Germans and the colonists, those uh, primitives from Lika and Montenegro who killed goats by electrocuting them with wires hanging from the ceiling. At 2.30 we arrived at Cervana Cerqua and drank a coffee and rakia. The peasant showed me his farm and all the animals. There was a woman visiting. She cried because her son was at the front. At nine we had our dinner. On TV I saw some amateur images of the Ustasche, the Nazi salute. In bed I worked on my diary. We laughed about the enormous bed, pompous furniture and huge mirror. I didn't sleep well because of the bed. Mabel's solicitor came and we went with him to Bella Cerqua. Around 1,000 hectares of land from the Combinat are being returned to their previous owners. Mabel and her sister will get back about 5 hectares. The solicitor deals with the restitution which will start after the harvest. Dushko is around 40 and was at the front line as a volunteer. He returned yesterday and doesn't want to go back, for no money in the world. He turned grey within four months. Everybody is drafted to serve in the army, preferably as volunteers, because then they don't need to register you. Firms have stopped working in Vojvodina, since so many people have been recruited, especially peasants and workers. No intellectuals from central Serbia, especially from the big cities, almost no one is going. They don't tell us why and how this is possible. You're just pulled out from your daily life to function as cannon fodder. The morale at the front line is very no low. Nobody wants to fight for a cause that has been engineered by politicians. There are men who shoot themselves in the foot or hand to be sent home. 
He spoke of a church that had been blown up by Arkan long after the fighting had stopped. First went the Serbian paramilitaries, then came the Yugoslav National Army. Houses were plundered, mainly by irregular militia, consisting of locals because they know their Croatian neighbors and what they own. Many criminals joined the fighting at the front line. He spoke of a shop in Belgrade owned by Arkan where this stuff is sold. He is a mass of money, linen, silk and starch. The population of those so-called liberated territories prefer the army to leave. They've had enough of them. At five, we ate pancakes and watched television. There was news from Bosnia and it was difficult to tell what is going on. Also at the Croatian front line they report fighting. At 9.15 we drove back with Milutin. At the petrol station peasants were waiting for the arrival of diesel. For one week there hasn't been any and they really need it for the sowing season. Milutin believes that Tujman will bombard Belgrade on the 8th of April as a revenge for the attacks on the Croatian cities. First we sow the sugar beets, then the sunflowers and after that the corn, which will be around the 8th of April. He also spoke about the local priest who is running two parishes. He earns around 80 Deutschmarks from contributions, funeral and memorial services. For the rest, he trades in timber and struggles from and smuggles from Romania. Milutin reproached the military man. Officers are staying at the army barracks in Bela Cerkva while all the ordinary boys are sent to the front line as so-called volunteers. I thought Mabel's point of view was not very coherent against that of this sly and cunning old fox. She told me that I didn't understand the intricacies of the language and that this military man was talking bullshit. The priest was speaking in high regard of Bishop Jeftic. Jeftic had been at the front line to support the soldiers and he also kept a war diary. He's always active and astute. We watched the news. In Bosnia the, si the situation is derailing. Mabel is sighing and sighing. We got up without breakfast. Mabel and I went to the Orthodox Mass. The priest took money from the two old people and told me that prices for these services will keep rising. The church is also due to receive land back in the restitution process, around 20 hectares. At 11 I went to Ozren, the village historian. Bela Cerkva was two-thirds German before World War II. Afterwards, people from central Serbia settled, but there are still 23 nationalities living here. His library functions as the village library. He has a little daughter and she reads Greek myths instead of fairy tales. He showed me photos from the front line from his army units. It was forbidden to take photos of the fighting and the destruction. He has just come back from spending three and a half months in the tank unit. You get used to everything, so do, the, uh, so do the civilians. Constant detonations, you just do your work. When there are no explosions, it all sounds strange. He would loathe going back. All those destroyed houses with family photos on the floor and pigs on the beds. Two boys from his unit had been killed. We had lunch, we walked around the farm there were 11 newborn pigs. Milutin told me that Mabel doesn't go to her mother's grave often enough. At half past seven in the evening we took the bus, the bus to Belgrade. Mabel was silent. She said there was so much fear of foreigners. Just like Veton Suroy, she had faced a disciplinary commission several times because of her contacts with foreigners. A police checkpoint at the entrance to Belgrade. 
I tried to work, but it was made impossible by the events in Sarajevo. All day long live broadcasts on TV. Images of a man who had been shot from the Holiday Inn. He was in his death throes. The parliament was full of demonstrators holding pictures of Tito and demanding a government of national salvation. Rumors spread that TV Sarajevo would be attacked. TV journalists and cameramen were racing around in cars. Destruction. Ammunition and weapon barracks of the Bosnian police plundered. Images of plunderers in cars. Images of cellars full of people hiding. On the evening news, it was announced that the European community has recognized the independence of Bosnia. At 6.30, Mabel and I went to a lecture given by Jacques Derrida about Europe's Christian identity, about the development of notions of conscience and responsibility, about dying for a higher cause. The Red Threat was the work of the Czech philosopher Jan Patochka. At half past nine, we went to McDonald's. I completed my list of pilgrimage sites, religious events and important people to be interviewed in Kosovo. At 5.30, I called V to tell him that I had finished this. I watched Cheshel in a talk show. He seems to have become a media star more than any other politician, as being made respectable this way. Everybody is watching, and even though everybody hates him, it's like pornography. Sheshel was talking about getting rid of Tito's grave. Mabel called her sister. She got a job at the Benetton shop in London. In the evening, I watched people protesting against Sheshel's statements on TV. He has compiled a list of journalists who should better leave Serbia. While we were eating, horrible images from Kupres on TV. There was very little news from Nijmegen. We went to the cinema, but the film was sold out. We spoke about disciplinary commissions. At nine, we arrived in Pristina. A lot of young people in cafes. Mabel's father was very silent. He had been a doctor for 30 years and had been dismissed from his job. He showed me the pediatric manuals he wrote and opened them where there were pictures of undernourished children. This is how we are forced to live here, he said. There are new apartment blocks being built opposite for Serbian colonists, but they will never come, he, he said. Since the occupation, there are more Serbs leaving than before. The university now only works for Serbian students, for those who did not to manage to get a place in Belgrade or Nish. Albanian conscripts are sent straight to the front lines but are not officially drafted. Men are trying to escape via Skopje and Bulgaria. Albanians no longer go to official hospitals. Deliveries are done at home. Parents who have children in schools and nurseries each pay 10 Deutschmarks to the teachers. Bedria is Bosnian and has learned Albanian. She teaches in the parallel school system. She says that the kids in the schools are now much better behaved because of this situation. Serbian politics is counterproductive. She has a daughter in London who is there with an expired visa. Another daughter is stuck in Sarajevo and will try and get away when the fights around the airport stop. 
Her third daughter is a problem. She socializes with the Serbs. These are now our enemies. At six, I made a call to the Netherlands. There had been an earthquake, 5.5 on the Richter scale. Iliriana's brother drove us home. He made a huge detour to avoid police checkpoints. A boy running very fast, chased by the police. He got caught. At the parish house in Letnica, Don Nikola Dutskic was not present. He is in Vernavokolo and tomorrow he will be in Skopje. At six, there was a short mass, led by two assistant priests with 50 people in the church, mainly women. They had received my letter, but only read it two days ago. I went home with Marianne and another seminarist. I played games with the children. Mother was baking bread. Thursday is market day in Vitina. Good Friday. I passed by the bakery and somebody told me that the baker had already fled. This man had been working in Austria and had had an accident. He had lost his job and had been in legal proceedings for seven years. He has seven children, two of them live in Germany. We carried the table, sheets and blankets into my new home. At six, mass started. Women were crawling on their knees over the floor of the church. I ate some eggs and bread, the others were fasting. Bros and I listened to the Croatian news on the radio. Rain and snow. There was no electricity. I was told the Serbs from the next village had cut it. At five, Bros and Ivanka told me about their daughter who had died. Ivanka said that Mary had appeared to her in a dream. Evening mass led by assistant priest David. A fire was lit in front of the church and from there candles were brought inside. Two children were baptized. A procession with a statue of Jesus. A wedding, Easter dinner, potato soup and chicken. On our way, a Serbian Chetnik in military uniform walked in front of us. I was watching his back. He seemed an older man. In the afternoon, I saw the first sunshine in days. Several buses with construction workers set off for Belgrade. When the war starts, they will kill us all, except you. We will flee into the forests across the border with Macedonia. Ivanka and Bros have gone to Skopje. The stove is cold. At the parish, they told me that they had no archive material on Letnica. The archive had been taken to Skopje, where it burned down. One of the previous parish priests had gathered material, but that was now located in Bosnia, in Kiseljak. An Albanian Muslim was in the church with his granddaughter. They were hoping to heal the girl. Don Nikola Dučkić was helping them. I had three visitors. They had problems with their jobs in Switzerland. I didn't sleep well. I had terrible diarrhea. St. George's Day. At 8 a.m. Ivanka chased me out of bed with a twig. I decided to go with Ivanka to Stubla. 
I could barely follow the old women uphill. I ran into Mabel on the bus. People said, there is your Dutch guy. There was no fuel. The bus to Eroshevats also didn't come. We hitchhiked. Panic in Pristina. People have started to hoard. Women and children are leaving. Serbian kids have been given a day off tomorrow, unexpectedly. Sheshel's paramilitaries had been parading through Pristina and Podujevo. At Evlianas, there was no running water. She spoke about Serbs harassing Albanian journalists. On Sunday, Serbs are organizing an Easter manifestation in Kosovo Polje. Hotel Grand is full of sandbags and snipers. We talked with Evliana about the religious identity of the Albanians. Catholicism versus Islam, about the possible mass conversions to Catholicism, if the cause of a question is not resolved soon. On our way to Belgrade, we passed several checkpoints, but nobody stopped us because it was a Lasta bus, a Serbian bus. On the bus, I watched two recent science fiction films. Towards the evening, I worked out my notes on the conversation with Evliana. Ah, to be difficult. Mabel got up in the night. She drank vodka and smoked like hell. I bought Mabel a book by Anais Nin. On the news, the new Yugoslavia had been proclaimed, but without much pomp. It's without Bosnia, Slovenia and Croatia. Of course, the Kosovo Albanians don't recognize this state. Olga isn't happy with this new Yugoslavia at all. They're all communists. She's afraid that the Americans will bomb Belgrade. She is in a lot of pain because of her hernia. The tram driver shouted to a friend along the, the tracks, Hey, kill those Bosnians, finish them off. Rada bought a huge piece of Dutch cheese. I worked out my field book notes at home all day. I want to see High Heels by Pedro Almodovar with Mabel. We had a suffocating discussion about us. Everything is closed. I worked out my field book notes all day. I worked at home all day. I ate something at McDonald's. I saw Jinjic passing by in the street. At 7 p.m. I took the bus to Gnilan. At a checkpoint in Nish I was the only one whose luggage uh, was searched. St. George's Day. Loud music kept me awake all night. At noon, I went with Refik to Radio Gnilan, where he made a broadcast in Romani. At the police station where I went to register, I was welcomed even before I introduced myself. Oh, there is our Dutch friend. At three, I was present at a funeral and spent some time with Refik's mother-in-law. A little boy was crying. He thought it was his mother that had died. Momchilo showed me all sorts of videos on the Serbian Orthodox Church, home videos of his wedding and his high school reunion. I made music with Bayram's uncle into the night.
on the news, Radoman Bozovic is in Pristina. He wants to start a dialogue with the Albanian parties. I had a long conversation with Chef Keta's parents about Letnica and about vampires. An Albanian reproached Sinan for not speaking Albanian. He asked him whose son he was, and Sinan lied. We went for a drink at Hotel Evropa. An army man was out of control. Bayram told me that this man had lived for 20 years in Croatia, but had now been expelled. He doesn't know where his wife and kids are. I listened to the news. Only, only Russia is opposing the European community. The European countries are withdrawing all their ambassadors. Refik told me to lock my door. You know what sort of a house you are in now. I read yesterday's Borba. I couldn't believe my eyes. They were saying something unheard, that Serbs are responsible for the violence in Sarajevo. I managed to the register at the police station. You're free to go. Okay. I took the bus to Vitina. The police officer on duty didn't know how to write my name. It took him ages to fill in the form in Cyrillic. The price of the taxi has doubled. Bros told me that there had been some arson attempts in the village. I went to the church and had a good look at the confessional. Pavlis' relative suspected me of being a spy. The BBC and Austrian radio report that fighting continues. The UN is withdrawing from Sarajevo. The church registrar showed me the books prior to 1945, including the birth register for the crypto-Catholics. I saw a poster announcing a party rally of the Serbian Radical Party in Vitina on Monday, the 18th of May, with uh, Šešel as the main speaker. Binac. Kabash, Orthodox Church, Catholic Church, Mosque. I started to copy the baptismal registers, children with both Catholic and Muslim names. Mark Muarem, Simon Osman, David Tefik, Mark Ali, Simon Serifi, Zefi Mehmeti. Maria Amide, Maria Baftia, Maria Arifia, Maria Kadisha, Maria Zaide, Maria Tahibe, Maria Fata, Maria Raba, Maria Hairia, Shashare. A car with a group of armed Serbs was seen entering the village at two o'clock last night. The man had walked into the mountains. Locals had cut their tires. Mars at Vernovokolo was very well attended. Vernes, Letnica. All day I worked furiously on the baptismal registers. Mark Muarem, Simon Osman, David Tefik, Mark Ali. Simon Serifi, Zefi Mehmeti, Maria Amide, Maria Baftia, Maria Arifia, Maria Kadisha, Maria Zaide, Maria Tahibe, Maria Fata, Maria Raba, Maria Hairia. At eight in the evening the electricity was cut. A group of local men are patrolling with rifles. I had to remove my contact lenses in the dark. I saw a big trailer at the village square. A number of families are moving to Croatia. 
Uroshevats looks desperate, run down factories and all that garbage in the street. I showered, had a beer and was happy to be in Belgrade. I had breakfast, but slowly. The Dutch embassy cannot help. If something happens in Kosovo, I will be left to my own devices. Mabel and I went to the cinema. We saw Tito and me, in which a small boy is confronted with the realities of socialism. We went to McDonald's to eat something. At eight we met Stasha, a feminist and peace activist from Montenegro. Also present was a pleasantly disturbed army officer he lights candles for the dead every day in front of the Serbian parliament. Activists told me about being threatened and spat at while collecting signatures against the war. Young, trendy people never sign. They convert fear into hatred. They look for protection in radical options. My mother called. She had sent one postcard and a letter, but I still haven't received them. At eight, we went to the vigil in front of the Serbian parliament. Biba has stopped watching TV. She was identifying with the victims. This could happen to me. The war had been started by Milosevic for him to stay in power. There was a relay baton, a grenade shell and barbed wire for Milosevic. The protests were stopped by the police. There were no speeches. I bore the badge saying, don't count on me. Olga was very happy. We stayed the whole afternoon. Half an hour later, I had the stamp in my passport. In the bus I saw bit, big red stickers alerting people to suspicious packages. In the evening there were images of a bloodbath in Sarajevo. A shell had landed on people queuing for bread. This was yesterday. The news reported the fiercest fights yet in Sarajevo. The Serbian Orthodox Church is distancing itself from Milosevic. BBC reported on the Serbian shelling of Dubrovnik. Croatian troops are leaving. Russia and China will not use their veto. Turkey is asking for military intervention. At two, we arrived in Sarvena Tsarkva. The family was very busy. It's the sewing season. Dushica and the others are not going to vote tomorrow, for whom they were asking. Hours after the decision, the United States has already taken action. It includes an oil embargo, and there is also talk of military intervention. My parents called and told me that today, from Yugoslavia, seven airplanes arrived at airport Maastricht. At 10.30 the village was dark. There was no electricity. The lawyer came to visit. Mabel agreed. We went to Yesenovo to draw up the papers. We went for a walk through the fields. Over the radio, in Belgrade, a massive demonstration against the war. We packed and said goodbye. There were large numbers of police in the streets. We were nervous and took the wrong tram home. 
the shelling on Sarajevo and Dubrovnik continues. People on the street, interviewed for TV, are referring to the National Socialist regime of Slobodan Milosevic. I had a hamburger and coke at McDonald's. She didn't have a proper passport. How would she leave? Can we flee via Letnitsa? In any case, we agreed to go together. On the news, Dutch trucks are stuck in Serbia. All the cultural institutes have been closed. I went to McDonald's. This is the only place where you have the impression that nothing is happening. V said that he wasn't a big fan of Milosevic. But neither did he see much good in the opposition. He was referring to Vuk's statements about Muslims in the Sanjak, which was V's birthplace. Vuk turns with the wind. At noon I met Mabel at the station together with Schkelsen, Anton, Isuv and Arben. We took the train to Subotica. I saw refugees in the park. At 4.30 we were taken to the zoo where the conference was taking place. There was consensus that problems in Macedonia could be resolved easily if Albanians were to recognize Macedonia. Why didn't the gypsies vote in the Kosovo elections? Calls for a UN protectorate in Kosovo in the framework of a wider solution for the Balkans. The boss of the zoo spoke about beekeeping. He had a parrot in his office. The Albanian delegation had a meeting there, among other things to discuss, holding informal talks between Serbian and Albanian intellectuals. At five, there was a thunderstorm. A woman gathered all the geese and chickens from the garden. With Schkelsen and Anton, I spoke about the Albanian Catholic community. Schkelsen thinks there is no longer a real chance of mass conversion to Catholicism. We went to a Serbian restaurant. I talked to Isuf while Mabel was playing with her lighter. In the background, Serbian nationalist songs. People were clearly chatting about us. A little dog that walked behind us. Mabel crossed the road with it. She crossed back and the dog followed. Presentations were given by Vlach, a Macedonian, a Serb from Hungary, a Gypsy from Bulgaria, etc. This is a market for ethnic groups. We watched the election results on TV. Arben had managed to get a bottle of liquor and Schkelsen divided the money. 1100 US dollar among the five of them. I read something, Ivo Andrich. We took the tram home. During the night I woke up because of thunder and lightning. I thought bombs had started falling. I had a big row with Mabel about politics. She accuses me of being pro-Serbian. I have to choose. High roads are emptier and there are big queues at pet petrol stations. Mabel bought a booklet. Daddy is pregnant. At four, I bought a pack of paper. It was very expensive. 22,000 dinars, which is 25 uh, Deutschmarks on the black market.
I went to the tram stop with an enormous pile of books. At 6.40 in the afternoon, I arrived in Budapest. Tibor was saying, on the surface of things, everything looks fine here. I put books in boxes. I worked out my diary in an outdoor cafe. At quarter past two, I sat down in a park and started to go through my notebooks. With Tibor, I bought five kilos of flour and two liters of sunflower oil, which you can't get in Yugoslavia. He also gave me two liters of homemade white wine. The policeman on the Yugoslav border was cynical. Yes, of course, you're here for your specialization. Many refugees and wounded at the train station. Sheshel's bodyguards had shot at protesting taxi drivers. I read Borba and only then I really understood the speculations all around me. There is a big protest movement gaining momentum against Milosevic and the aim is to topple him on the 21st of June. Danger of Serbian civil war. Petrol has been capped at 30 liters. US citizens have been advised to leave within the week. Incidents in Kosovo around the church of St. Anton. Mabel and I looked for wedding rings. I had another row with Mabel. I, I told her she better leave if she thinks I'm loving the Serbs too much. We went for a walk at Kalemegdan. There is a black cloth over the monument of gratitude to France. People are going through rubbish containers and bins. It's becoming normal. At noon the students occupied the university. We looked in vain for vinegar. At 10 in the evening I watched football on television. The Netherlands-Russia, nil-nil. That was a disappointment. We finally bought wedding rings in a small shop owned by an Albanian Catholic couple. The woman is Anton Cheta's sister. Pizza. Polaroid photo. At 7 p.m. we went to McDonald's. I called Maike. In Nijmegen, the renovation of our apartment will begin on the 1st of September. They start on our side of the street. The Dutch language books have arrived. 100 grams of coffee costs two Deutschmarks. There are lots of cherries sold on the street. There is little we are leaving behind in Belgrade. In the afternoon, I spoke to my father. Every day, there are airplanes full of Albanians arriving from Skopje. The Dutch have introduced visas for Yugoslavs. At the police checkpoint on the way to Pristina, a heavily armed policeman with a bulletproof vest entered the bus. There was also a tank. At Illyrianas I saw the second half of the match between the Netherlands and Germany. We won 3-1. Written on a house. This is Serbia. It reminded me of Sarajevo. Fool, this is a post office. We played ping pong in Ivalia. I played the flute. I couldn't follow the conversations. Only Arvin spoke to me in Serbian and he was telling jokes. 
How does Shashel remove a condom? He farts and pulls it out. My Albanian is improving. Anton Cheta said he will soon officially open the new Kosovo parliament. He spoke about solidarity, the reconciliation of blood feuds that comes from the people and is not imposed from above, about Europe and Kosovo, dervishes and sheikhs, about the Bektashi order and Ashura, about the Muslim Bar Yaktar in the Catholic Hoti clan in Montenegro, about Virginesh, women who remain virgins and become social men, about women and blood feuds, women and clan society, etc., etc. We all got pretty drunk. The Dutch People's Party for Freedom and Democracy is raising the issue of refugees from Yugoslavia. There aren't too many of them. It is impossible to get flour. The party was cancelled because members of the Social Democratic Party of Kosovo have been harassed by the police. At an apartment block, two police officers were smashing a window. They were waiting for somebody. We sat in the garden in our new place. We kept hearing gunfire and had a cup of tea with the owner of the house. I, I switched on the football match, the Netherlands against Denmark, and switched it off. Mabel was crying. I stayed in bed until after the Dutch news. Airport Maastricht is closing to flights from Skopje. 25,000 refugees are there already. At 5 p.m. I arrived in Vitina. I took a taxi to Letnica. We watched the news. Twelve babies died in a hospital in Banja Luka. Bros has started locking the gate. The arson attacks have been resolved. A mentally disturbed Croat has done it. They've stopped patrolling. At 11, I went to the mass. Pavle and Marianne are leaving for Zagreb soon. I worked on the baptismal registers into the evening. A thunderstorm was raging outside. The electricity got cut and I was locked inside the office. Water on the floor. I climbed out through the window. Bros told me that people from Vernes and Vernavokolo are all leaving now. He also wants to leave. But Ivanka is against it. At 9.30 in the morning I went to see the registrar. But he had left for Skopje on foot. Somebody said it was his annual holiday. At the police station they asked me, are you back again? What is so interesting about Letnica? In Skopje, lots of fruit sold on the market, bicycles on the street. The atmosphere is much more relaxed. Ivanka had received a letter from relatives urging her to come to Croatia. She was crying. I'm thinking of going back to Pristina. In bed I listened to Albanian music. T came to visit. His relative is a member of the SPS. Is he spying on me now? He owns a pool bar and wants to stay in Letnica. He talked about his army experience. He had been a telegraphist in the army. 
and it's now learning Albanian. I had a headache. At 11 in the evening I listened to the BBC. There was a 45 minute report on Yugoslavia. A review of a year of war. It started a year ago in Slovenia. Mitterrand flew into Sarajevo today. They received a phone call from Sarajevo, from a Catholic convent that is encircled. Sebo and Marianne are leaving. Pavle is leaving tomorrow. Marianne was stopped by a policeman who was looking for me. He was told I had to report in Vitina. We said goodbye to Pavle. We promised that we would meet again in Croatia. We walked home in the dark. We were drunk. I worked on the registry books the whole day. I covered the years 1866 to 1889. Mark Muarem, Simon Osman, David Tefik, Mark Ali, Simon Serifi, Zefi Mehmeti, Maria Amide, Maria Baftia, Maria Arifia, Maria Kadisha, Maria Zaide, Maria Tahibe, Maria Fata, Maria Raba, Maria Hairia. I had fever and diarrhea. I received a birthday card from my parents. I waited for one and a half hours at the police station. Finally, they took my passport. I was told to report to mo tomorrow in uh, Gnilan for a police interview. Mabel was at home. She had made a cake for my birthday and brought presents. Handkerchiefs, socks and a wallet. The policeman asked all sorts of questions. What plans I had, what on earth I was looking for in Letnitsa now. Why the Croats were leaving, etc. He also asked Mabel some questions. Mabel said she was Albanian. The secretary shook her head and said, indeed, that too is possible. She typed up the transcript. The, sh the small changes I suggested were not included. I had to sign and they gave me my passport back. We shook hands. Around three, Refik arrived. He approached me in a hostile manner, as if it was clear that I was a Western agent. He had been asking himself yesterday whether I had participated in the student protests in Belgrade. We left. We had some food in an outdoor cafe. There was a man who ran by with a machine gun. At half past four, we took the bus to Pristina. The driver was driving very fast. I can't write a letter, I can't send a postcard, I can't write anything at all. What good are notebooks? They won't help me survive. I got some groceries and some peanut butter to last a couple of days. I bought Mabel a pair of sunglasses for her birthday. No speakers, no headphones, no records to play. I have a feeling that I will not stay for very long anymore. At two we had lunch and quarrelled about politics. Perhaps at the root of Mabel's radicalism is her own ambivalent identity. She wants to eradicate every sign of doubt about her loyalty to the Albanian cause. On one of the floors of a high-rise opposite Grand Hotel, the headquarters of the Serbian Radical Party is located, marked with an image of, of Sheshel. 
strategically positioned close to the army barracks. There were only a few passengers on the bus to Belgrade. It's a national holiday. The day of the uprising against fascism. A student demonstration was heading for Dedinje to Milosevic's house. Everyone was carrying posters with a text, We are waiting. A lot of fun and laughter, fashionable girls and perfumes. It didn't seem to be very serious at all. There were people along the roads applauding. My mother cried and my father tried to control himself. At 10.30 I watched a live broadcast of a student barricade on the Sava Bridge. The atmosphere was heated. The students had failed to reach Milosevic's residence and had come back into the centre of town. I went to the mosque and spoke to the Mufti. He struck me with his typically ironic and diplomatic language. Yet he also made himself quite clear about Milosevic and his lot. Student demonstrations. This time to go to Tito's grave and state television. I went to Raiko Djuric, a Roma activist. His front door had been demolished. They took documents from the apartment and Raiko had fled to Berlin. His wife said he could come back now. There hadn't been any other incidents, but he wanted to stay. At five, I went to McDonald's. On television, there was a story about Cheshel putting, pulling his gun on the students. Mabel needs a return ticket and she can only go via Bulgaria. The British conference organizer is going to write her an invitation. She already bought a ticket, a fake one. I read all the Dutch newspapers, all the Borbas and Vremes. I waited in vain for the bus from Pristina. It was al almost midnight when Mabel arrived. The bus driver had sold the fuel on the way to Belgrade and the bus was left without petrol. We went to the Dutch embassy to apply for Mabel's visa. It had to be done in fivefold, with three passport photos, copies of a ticket, the passport and a letter of guarantee from me. They are now guarding the embassy, you cannot enter freely. At 8 p.m. we went to McDonald's and ate hamburgers. I packed quite quickly. On the bus to Pristina, they showed a violent porn film. I talked to Mabel about the differences between Albanians and Serbs. We were quite jealous of Serbian kids because they were always much freer. They are quickly dissatisfied, like spoiled kids who want to smash everything because they don't immediately get what they want. I typed the outline of Isuf's book on Kosovo. He asked me for my opinion on the synopsis. I told him that I thought that Albanians were again presented as objects and not subjects of history. Why always take Serbian politics as the point of departure and not the Albanian story of resistance? We spoke about the poisoning of children. Médecins du monde has found evidence of the use of army poison gas. Isuf said that the Albanian leaders will most probably accept autonomy. Bosnia will not be partitioned. 
this would be too much of a precedent for the ex-Soviet Union. Isuf had played an important role in developing the strategy of non-violent resistance. When it happened, the Serbs didn't believe their eyes. Albanian violence would of course have helped Serbia very much. Isuf respects Adem Demaci because after 20 years in prison he can still say I do not hate the Serbs. I didn't sleep well. I dreamt of a man who enters a shop with a machine gun and starts shooting around like a wild animal. The West was clever. It took capital and left us marks. On television a report about Muslims throwing Serbian babies to the lions at the zoo in Sarajevo. While I was working on my translation, I heard shots outside. The sound of gunfire off in the distance, I'm getting used to it now. The police came by. They searched for a boy who had been called up for the army but had gone into hiding. In a particular cafe, you can buy passports. At five, the bride was taken. The men accompanying the bridegroom are in one house and the women in another. After an hour, the bride is brought inside. She walks slowly in order to show that she is reluctant to go. The police came, looking for that boy again. In the evening, I drank a bottle of champagne with maple. She spoke about the sexual encounters that occur in extended families, for instance, between a girl and her uncle. At half an hour before midnight, a heavily armed group of policemen with bulletproof vests entered the cafe and switched off the music. Mabel quickly paid the bill and told me, if asked, to say that I had only arrived yesterday. We walked home, up the hill. In the dark, somewhere in front of us, somebody fired several shots. Linda, who is five years old, is staying with us all day. She's teaching me Albanian and I play the flute for her. At half past seven, we had an ice cream. There was police in the shop. We sat down at some distance from them. At home we hear gunfire almost every half hour. You never know whether you will wake up alive. Linda constantly asks me to play pieces on the flute. There were a lot of army jets flying over. In the evening, again, gunfire. I entered the bus and Mabel waved at me. There was a strong shower in Letnica. It was completely dark in the village. I didn't sleep well. Bros was listening to the radio very loudly. Outside I heard five shots. There was no soap anywhere. When I finally found some I bought nine pieces at once. Police and soldiers had entered the village. Ivanka thought they had arrested me. She thought that I had been done for. There were several masses at Dunov. 
none of the priests or nuns wanted to take me back to Letnica. I went with an Albanian who was going to Stubla. We came across a car which was left without fuel and helped pushing it, riding downhill in it. We continued walking. Celik, Lokva, Stubla. On the way, the Albanian collected his cows and goats, which he had left in the bushes. At five we ate. Ivanka and Bros were quarreling. They had been sleeping separately for the last two months. Ivanka didn't want to leave. People don't buy anything from the shop, they only drink there. There was a drunken man lying on the floor singing. Tomorrow there are four buses from Letnica leaving for Croatia. Many people came to the bus to wave. 200 people were leaving from Skopje to Zagreb. Women were crying, men as well. Uroševac, Pristina, no checkpoints. Army jets are flying low. The garbage hasn't been collected for two weeks now because there is no fuel. The first civilian has been shot. Belgrade. I went to McDonald's, but they had no more fries. Budapest or Sofia from Thessaloniki from Sofia I played the flute for Linda and talked Albanian with her the garbage has still not been collected it is the third week. People are putting fire to it now. At the Olympic Games in Barcelona, Yugoslavs are winning medals in the shooting competition. Yeah.